Hey everyone, uh, this is the first video of a series of videos about Polkadot, parachains, um, the parachain slot auction process, and crowd loans. In this first video, we're going to be covering kind of basics around Polkadot and what parachains are. We'll talk about the founding team, um, a little bit about the ecosystem, and then that'll lead you to the next video. Um, I'm Dan Reeser. I'm VP of Growth at Akala. We're a DeFi um, platform building on Polkadot. Prior to Akala, I was um, on the Web3 Foundation team and worked on the launch of Polkadot and Kusama. Um, Polkadot, if you're fairly new to, to the kind of community and the ecosystem, Polkadot is a multi-chain um, kind of environment for multiple blockchains to connect to have kind of native interoperability or the ability to send data or value between blockchains natively. And also it's a, it's a kind of a way for teams to come and inherit the security of the network instead of having to build their own set of validators or nodes um, similar to what you may be uh, familiar with with Bitcoin miners. Polkadot was founded by these three individuals, um, Dr. Gavin Wood, who was the one of the original founders of Ethereum and the, the CTO of the project. He invented the Ethereum virtual machine and the, the Solidity programming language that's used to build on Ethereum. And then he went on to uh, found the Web3 Foundation and Parity Technologies, which are building um, the Polkadot project. He also built this along with um, Robert Habermeyer, as well as Peter Shaban, um, who both have spent time at Parity and Web3 Foundation. Polkadot is a, is a t kind of a top 10 blockchain network by market cap. It's already got a significant kind of foothold in the industry, but where it's headed is kind of the next phase and final phase of its launch, which is the launch of parachains. Um, you can't build applications on Polkadot itself. You can only build applications on Parachain. So this is a significant step um, kind of in the history of Polkadot and, and its ability to complete the launch and get to the point where we can um, start to see applications and users and liquidity on all these different Parachains. Um, this is of what many believe is the most significant launch since Ethereum and Bitcoin, kind of the third chapter in crypto history. And it's solving many of blockchain's um, longest standing problems or challenges. So cross-chain, as I mentioned, the ability to do governance on the blockchain instead of kind of off in a, in a private room. Um, the ability to scale um, instead of reaching these kind of huge gas prices and, and making it difficult to scale an application when there's many more users using it. Um, customization of blockchain. So many of these these blockchains that we call parachains are customizing for specific use cases or applications like Akala building specifically for DeFi. Um, the ability to upgrade the network without forking so we can continuously upgrade the, the blockchain of Polkadot or um, these parachains which ultimately makes these these blockchains kind of future-proof because you can continue making them better and better. And then last but not least, uh, network security. So as I mentioned, any blockchain can come in and just inherit the proof of stake security of Polkadot instead of having to build their own security on their own. So why would a team like Akala or any other parachain want to launch on Polkadot? Um, it's really, it really boils down to these two things. So you get security as a team from Polkadot itself, and you get the ability to have cross-chain transactions with any other kind of network connected to Polkadot which is really valuable for teams. If you look at this diagram, um, as I said, this is a multi-chain environment. So when you zoom in on one of these, this is an individual parachain. So each of these little gray squares you see around here is a, is a parachain. And these parachains can be built for specific applications. So it might be um, DeFi, in Akala's case, it might be gaming, it might be NFTs or media. Um, Really, the kind of the, the list goes on as far as what the different use cases are for these parachains. And there's a significant amount of teams um, looking to build in the ecosystem. Um, because of this, you, there's been this, this idea to create this sort of competition around launching in one of these parachain slots on the network. There's a limited amount of slots, so that means there's low supply and there's a lot of demand for these slots. Um, and as a team, you must win an auction in order to kind of earn the right to launch on Polkadot. You can't just openly um, launch a blockchain on Polkadot like you could do with ICOs back in um, 2017, 2018, when, when teams could just kind of put up a website, launch a token, and they had no accountability for actually delivering on what they were promising. In this case, it's a highly competitive environment, and it kind of forces the best teams to rise to the top in order to win this auction. And as you can see here, this is just one of the, um, a look 
of kind of the whole ecosystem and how many projects, whether it's like dApps or DeFi projects, IoT projects, the list is kind of endless and continues to grow. And this is the graphic created by Polka Project where you can kind of take a look at a lot of the projects that are ongoing in the ecosystem. But as you can see, there's there's tons of projects building and a lot of demand to launch on Polka. So that concludes the first video in this series. I um, hope you learned a little bit about Polkadot and the founding team and what parachains are. Um, in the next video that you can see at the top of the screen, we'll walk you through um, kind of more details on the parachain slot auction process and crowd loans. If you have any questions, feel free to join us in our Discord and you can learn more at our website. And I'll uh, see you guys soon. Thank you.